Hi everyone, I'm José Valim, and today I want to talk about Livebook 0.5. So those who are not familiar, Livebook is an open source web application for writing interactive and collaborative code notebooks in Elixir. You can run it on your machine, you can run it inside a Docker container, you can run it on fly.io. And what I have here is that I have Livebook running on my machine and I'm going to use this instance to show you some of the new features that we have in this release. Okay, so uh, to get started, what I'll do is that I'm going to come to the Explore section where we have a bunch of exploratory notebooks where you can learn more about Livebook and different projects in the Elixir ecosystem. And the new feature I want to talk about, one of the new features uh, is right here in the initial notebook, which is that we now, previously we supported KTEX, but now we also support uh, mermaid diagrams directly in Livebook. So in the past weeks, we have been talking to a bunch of teams that are using Livebook. And uh, a lot of them, they're using Livebook for writing documentation, right? And this is great because you can run Livebook within the context of a project. So you can write the documentation, show how some of the APIs work and set up other users in your project to play with those APIs and get some feedback. And it was very common to want to um, design and write some diagrams. And in previous versions, what they were doing is that they were using a separate tool to, to draw those diagrams and then they were exporting an image and bringing it to Livebook, which is an issue because now those things, they are versioned separately and this kind of stuff. And uh, with Mermaid.js, you can actually write now your diagrams within the markdown code that is part of your notebooks. So you just write Mermaid, you write the diagram here and it's all version and Livebook recognizes the Mermaid format and is going to render the diagrams in place. So this is a really good addition for those of you who have been using Livebook for documentation purposes. The other feature I want to show you uh, that is new in Livebook uh, 0.5 is, uh, is about Kino. So we have done a big rewrite in how Kino works and interact with Livebook. And, uh, and you can learn everything that we, we've done to all the new features we added to Kino by going to the Explore section. We have now this whole series of chapters where you build a bunch of interesting things. But for this video, I want to start something from scratch, right? So very slowly, so we see what is going, I'm going to break it down, uh, what those changes mean, okay? So and in the notebook, we can execute code. Right, so uh, we can do whatever we want here. We can execute uh, whatever Elixir code we want. And we have the Livebook web application and the code that runs here uses a separate runtime, which is isolated from the web application, which is good, right? You don't want a bad code here to break the Livebook application. But this introduces a problem, right? Like, well, uh, imagine that we're writing a, a notebook in this Elixir code that is running separately but we want this notebook to create widgets or UI components that the notebook user can use and interface with. That's exactly what Kino does. So Kino plays this bridge, right, between your code and Livebook. So uh, Kino teaches Livebook how to do interactive widgets and UI components and so on. So let's install Kino to get started, okay? So I'm going to install uh, Kino the latest version here. And um, yeah, it's installed. So the first Kino that most people are going to use and see it in practice is the input Kino. So let's, let's do that. So let's say we want to ask uh, my name. So I want to have a text input and we're going to ask for the name. And now I can execute the cell and we can see that the input is rendered here. And now we can read, we can read from this input. So uh, let's say hello, and I want to read. I want to read from the name input that we we rendered on the page. So if we do this, nothing is going to be printed because there is nothing in the input. But I I can write my name in here, and you can see here that we know that this cell depends on this input. So this cell was marked as stale because the input value changed. And now I can render again and it's going to do the, the proper thing. So that's a very simple mechanism of how we use Kino to print something in the UI, right? And, uh, and get that value back and know when that value changes and so on. But in, to further expand, expand on the changes to Kino, let's 
let's build a little bit more on top of this. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move this tile to the left and I'm going to get this other, uh, this other browser here and I'm going to open this browser on the same page, on the same session. And Livebook is collaborative, right? So if I come and I do a change here, it's going to affect the other side and we can even see the cursors where they are, right? So Livebook is fully collaborative and uh, inputs, when I change one input, it's going to affect the other side too, right? And the reason for this is exactly because if the input can change the value of future cells, right? We want everybody to be working on the same input so everybody see the same values and the same results. Again, it's really leaning in this collaborative aspect of Livebook, okay? However, so you can think that inputs are stateful, right? They are, they are part of the, the notebook state and it's tracked with everything that is tracked by, love, by, by Livebook. However, imagine that you don't, want, you don't want the input to be shared with everybody. Imagine that you are using Livebook to build like a chat application where each user is going to have their own names, each user, they are going to have a, their own a message box, okay? So I'm going to delete what we have done so far and, uh, and we are going to talk about this next step, right? So while Kino input is stateful, in the new live book version, we have something that we call Kino control. And the difference to Kino control is that everything in Kino control, let me get some space back here. Uh, everything in Kino control, it's message driven it, and it's not shared, right? So it's not part of the, the notebook state. So we can have uh, interactive widgets that are per user, per each session that is interacting with the, the live book. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a uh, Kino control frame, for, not sorry, form. And this is going to, to render a form where we have to pass the fields and a couple options, right? So what are the fields that are going to do? So our fields are going to be true. It's going to be the name, which is going to be a text input. And we want to have the message field, which is going to be another in Kino input, but we want this to be a text area. And that's going to be the message. So those are our inputs. And we are going to have a submit button, which we're going to call send. So this now is going to render a form. And, uh, and we can consume, so, this is a form, let's assign to this variable. And now we can consume all those events in of the form as a stream. But before we, we so if you are building a chat app, every time we get a new message in the form, right, we want to send it somewhere. So I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create another cell in here at the top, which is a Kino frame, okay? And a Kino frame is, is a frame, is a place where you can update and write things to it anytime you want. So I can do Kino frame uh, render, uh, hello. And you can see, oops, I need to pass the frame as input. So you can see that it updated. I can update the frame. I can even, uh, is it append? Yes, I can even append to the frame, right? So every time I execute, it's appending something to the frame. And you can kind of see where this is going, right? So. Uh, let me delete this. We're going to keep the frame. So we have a frame where we are rendering things, okay? We have a form for the name and the message. So now for us to build our chat app, all that we need to do, all the remaining PNCs to get the stream of messages, of events that are coming from the form and send them to the, and, and, and send them to the, to the frame, okay? So how we are going to do this? Um, let's create a new Elixir cell that is going to kind of wrap everything together. So for each event that we have in, actually, let's take a look at how those events are going to look like, right? So let's do Kino uh, control, and then we want to get a stream of the form, form events. So we stream, it's a, it's a stream of events, right? So we want to get a stream of events of the form, and we want to get only one just to see how it looks like. So when we do this, you can see that it's blocking now. We are waiting for the input to show up, right? So let's go and say, hello. No, this is my name, Jose, and hello. This is good. So you can see that the if we get one element of the stream only, 
it has the data in here, so message and name, it has the origin and it has the type of event. Okay, so this is perfect, right? So for us to have our functional um, chat application, I'm just going to get the data out of this stream and I'm going to, um, let's do first in the frame, let's render welcome to chat app. So that's going to clear the frame and is going to, to prepare us to render messages now. And now every time there is a, a, a new event, right? What we want to do is that we want to render the name and we want to render the message and that's it. So now, wait, there is an error here. We are missing the frame again. Um, Right, so this, is, so this is it, right? We have the frame, we are rendering the initial message on the frame. And for the stream of events that are coming to the form, we just want to append them to the frame. I need to pass the frame here and passing the name and the message from the form. So if I run this, now it's going to run forever, right? Until I stop it. And the reason why it's going to run forever is because we, we did not say, hey, I, want just, I just want one event, right? So if we go here, it's saying, welcome to chat app. Right, but now I can say, uh, if I send hello, you can see that's going to say, hey, Josette is saying hello from this side. But now I can go from, to the other tab in here and, uh, and I can say, well, this is going to be Alice. Uh, and she's going to say hello to, and we can see that the Alice message appeared here, but they all have their own individual inputs. All right, so uh, this is a very quick example of how uh, we are using the collaborative features uh, of Livebook to actually build something collaborative too. And sure, this is like way too simple for a chat app, but we can customize the messages, bring it a little bit more of style. And with that, you can kind of build a functional, you know, a usable chat app in like 12 lines of code or something like that. Right? And you can kind of see the direction where we want to take this in the future. So in the future, what we hope to do is that you will actually be able to deploy your notebooks too. So when you deploy, the, we are going to hide uh, the sections, we are going to hide the code cells, all you're going to have is the keynotes. So you're going to have only the parts that the user needs to see or that the user needs to interact with. And everything else is going to, to stay hidden and you can deploy that to a particular URL and have people access it. So you can build reports, you can build simple chat apps, you can even build multiplayer games actually. So one of the notebooks that we have um, in, in, in the explore section that teaches how you, how you can use Kino is actually uh, building a Pong game, okay? So here's the whole notebook. It's, a, it's kind of a, of a big notebook because you really build the whole game from scratch, but I can show you how it works right here. So uh, here we have the... So it's loading, so it's taking a while, okay? So yes. So here we have the final cell of the code that's kind of wire everything together. And, can say, and here is a keyboard button. That's because we have a keyboard control. So I can join from this side and I'd say I'm waiting for another player to join. So I'm going to join from this other side and there you go. We have, we have a Pwn game, right? Running on top of Livebook, right? And each, and this one supports two users, right? But each, is, each user is in their own individual cell. Um, and, and there's more in this release. This is not all. So the other thing in this release is that everything, like the chat app that we've built, the Pwn game, all those things, they are built with the built-in Kinos, the built-in widgets that come with Kino, right? Everything is built-in. And before this release, if you wanted to do something that was not supported by Kino, it was like tough luck, right? You, you can't do it. Uh, but with uh, Livebook 0 0.5, we now have Kino.js, which allows you to build anything you want, right? You write the Elixir code that is running in, inside your runtime. You write some JavaScript code that is running on the browser inside an iframe, and we set up the bridge between those two. So you can build any kind of Kino, any kind of widget that you want. So here, for example, 
In our example, is um, is a leaflet. This is just an example of how you can use the leaflet.js library to build your own Kino. And then here I'm going to execute this Elixir cell that is randomly adding pins around the city, but you have the control, you can do whatever you want. An even better example of how you can build in this new version of Livebook is, it's simpler, but I think it shows the full power. It's a bidirectional live counter. So what you do is that you write your Elixir code, right? So you have uh, the JavaScript code that is going to run the client, everything together, 60 lines of code. And let me move the other tab here. And what you can see here is that we have the counter and I can bump the counter from JavaScript, right? And it reflects on the other session. I can go to the other session, bump the counter from here. I can bump the counter from the Elixir code, right? So uh, this is a perfect example of how you can use Livebook, right? To build uh, these collaborative features, these collaborative applications uh, using all the support that Livebook has right, to build itself and being collaborative in itself. Um, so there are a couple other features in, in, in this release. You can check out the, the release notes for everything. And speaking about release notes, we actually have, let me see if I can make this larger. Um, maybe if I disable, yes. So we also added uh, a change log, a proper change log on the website. So if you go to news, you're going to see this page where you can subscribe to updates. So you can receive them by mail, uh, RSS feeds, or you can even receive notifications in Slack. So every time we have something new, you can get an update and check this out. So that's what I had to share for today. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm really looking forward to all the exciting things that you can build with Livebook now. Thank you.